Now, here's the real problem on this one. There's two problems. First one's the Russian roulette problem. So you've only known me for a few minutes, but you probably figured out I'm a high-functioning psychopath. Who would like to play uh, Russian roulette with me? I have a revolver with me. Would you like to play? Anybody? Good man. Yes, excellent. Let's go over here. Good lad. Um, so let's think about this. Yes, I'm coming to you. I'm going to get the gun. Right. Um, so imagine that we have the gun in front of us, right? And uh, I'm going to give you 100,000 euros every time you click and you don't blow your brains out. Would you do it? 100,000 euros. You would do it. So basically what you're telling me is your risk tolerance is 500,000 for a chance of what, what's the odds of blowing your brains out? What's the odds? What's the, what? the odds, the probabilities in the picture. That is too complex for me, Dad. How many, what, have I put the bullet in the gun and I shaped the gun? How many chambers are in the gun? One, one from 10 or? Two? One from 10, one from six, right? But just limited, right? So if I put the gun on the desk, you're going to look at it, unless you know, this really is too complex, in which case you should not be playing Russian roulette, right? But you look at it and you go, OK, there's six chambers in the gun. There's one bullet. I'm not doing 100,000. I'll do a million. OK, would you do it for a million? I mean, come on, a lot of problems are solved. Six to one chance, a million euros, cash free, take it out in a bag. You want to play? <laughs> what about 10 million? Would you take that chance? How many people would take the chance for 10 million if the odds were one in six? None of you? You're also risk averse? Good, I'm glad I would. 10 million, damn straight, absolutely. That solves a lot of problems. Not the world's problems, but many of my problems. Absolutely, right. Now, here's the problem with playing Russian roulette with me. I might lie about the number of chambers, right? There may be more, there may be less. So imagine you only get to see the barrel of the gun. You don't get to see the chambers of the bullets. So you only get to see the outcomes of the data stream. You do not get to see the generators of the data. Now imagine I told you private information. There's a thousand chambers in the gun. In fact, there's a limitless number potentially. There's only one bullet and it's still 100,000. So I pick her up and I go click, 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 click. Click, I've just made $100,000. Click, 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 click. This is great. By lunchtime, I'm a millionaire. Now, what am I doing in terms of sampling? I'm building a data stream. And what I'm implicitly doing is thinking that there has to be some kind of distribution of probabilities. Now, I want to stop before I get to the bullet, right? But I've been told there's an infinite number of chambers, so I'll keep going. And then I start to make the error that all humans do. The more data I have, the more confident I get that the next one won't hurt me. See, because I've been clicking till lunchtime. Click, 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 click. No, nothing's happened so far. Click, 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 click. So I'm basically thinking that there's a mean in this distribution. And I'm thinking that the more data that I have, the more I get to know what sort of the implied mean and what the real mean of the distribution is. And they're coming together the more that I click and the more that I click. And forced, of course, what happens is with the very next chamber, I blow my brains out. And then I don't get to collect any of the money. Now, as humans, we would say, well, you were just being greedy. You should have stopped. You'd already made 10 million. Why did you keep going? But if I think about it as a probability problem, if I got as far as 10 million, I should at least keep going to 11. But that's the one that kills you. So the other fallacy on this one, to take the Trump problem, we have no data. Let's flip it around. You can have too much data. You can overinterpret the data. You can imagine that what you're doing is building a probability distribution of likely outcomes. And therefore, you think how you know how risky the world is. Unfortunately, the very next piece of data blows your brains out. So either you've got too little data to say anything, or you've got so much data that you're overconfident. Not a good way of thinking about risk, but tragically, that's the world that we live in.